And good morning. We've got sound on, we've got vision on. I'm in the woods. The election's gone by. My country is going to hit, you know, the skids anytime soon. And Boris Johnson is already thinking about overturning stuff to make a no-deal Brexit possible. And it's Tuesday, the 17th of December. <sighs> so yeah, I'm back at work now after my time off. Um, I don't know if anybody saw the live cast. A lot of people did. It's one of my more popular videos. <sighs> Weirdly. Me being drunk and bitching about the results of an election. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the pity party is over. And I'm back in the woods. With my... Uh, so, apologies for how I look. Uh, so... For those of you who haven't been keeping up with current events, yeah, new haircut. Uh, yeah, sorted myself out a new haircut as I want to face the year with a new perspective. And I know a haircut is a very s surface level thing, a very, uh, you know, shallow thing to have if you at all care about it but you know I've had long hair for a very long time for a large amount of my life and uh, yeah makes you stand out which is not a good thing sometimes and uh, yeah all sorts of other stuff you know people judge you and I just want to be invisible because we've got stuff to do people so currently on the agenda um, we have a concept of a uniform almost sort of like an earth first battalion thing I don't know uh, whether you can see in my new boiler suit so that could be a thing don't know why I did that so yes the odds are never in our favour let's take a walk down here haven't been down here in a while. Let's take a wander about. Woo. So yeah. So the haircut is just a kind of like a, a declaration of purpose. You know? Can't even see whether I'm in the frame now. I probably am. So yeah, so we got a, I wanted a declaration of purpose for 2020. So I'll be in my 50th year on this planet. Half a century. And yeah, some things have improved. You know. Some things have got worse. I'm still not getting the feeling that we're any closer to Star Trek. Which, given that, that, that it came out in the 1960s. 66, I think. Um... Which promised all sorts of, you know, oh, I can't get this right. Which promised us all sorts of moves forward. Ah, let's have a look at the river. Ah, it's pretty calm today, it didn't rain yesterday. So yeah, I'm thinking that the concept of bringing Star Trek into uh, into being almost or at least something like the uh, first earth battalion good old feb or some kind of uh, you know a new culture hence the name culture with a k and uh, harlequin's working on the freedom box thing I think he's got that dialed in pretty good. Let's have another hand shot. Yeah, the thing that you can see on the bottom, that, that would normally be holding my mobile phone, but it's charging, because I have poor planning skills. Because uh, I'm going to work this evening, and I want to be able to listen to audiobooks. So yeah, so there's lots of stuff going down. Uh, in the world, not just the UK, but for the last week I was pretty, you know, 
in my bubble of worrying about the election, but in reality, you know, let's face it, corporations and governments will still try and control our every move and they'll still try and see us as product. So yeah, there's that. And I'm over the pity thing, you know. It's just, uh, you know, the forces that will try and control you will become more overt. So uh, I got my new haircut and I got my new tattoo, both at very local places to me, both of them practically in the same street as me. So, in the spirit of Kwanzaa, which uh, definitely worth looking up. And no, it's not culturally appropriation. I don't think it is anyway. And I don't think people are persecuted for celebrating Kwanzaa. <laughs> in fact, it's celebrated by millions of people around the world. And it's literally a reworking of the African First Fruits Festival. Because if you're in the, summer, the southern hemisphere, as Kim will know right now, it's uh, basically the middle of summer. Or well, coming towards the end of summer. And the first fruits in the harvest year, when you're in an agrarian lifestyle, which seems to dominate a lot of our thinking still. Even though we're in almost going from industrial to post-industrial civilization, We're still at civilization stage zero. You know, we're not even a stage one civilization. We haven't even properly put people on the other planets in our solar system or tried to terraform them or tried to expand. So yeah, so in our, thank you to Chipco for the, uh, the uh, um, what do you want to call it, the discussion that we had a few, a month ago or so on that. So yeah, our stage zero civilization, which unless we as, you know, an alternative look at things, unless we have, you know, a better way of keeping an eye out for each other and protecting what is valuable in our culture and not allowing it to be eroded. And I'm not talking about religious stuff. I'm talking about the intellectual and empathic progress we've made, we can make as a species, which we're not doing. Shall we? Should we go and have a look? Well, this could be fun. And this is where my camera died. So, isn't that interesting? So, uh, for months now, after the river changed course and uh, the sandbank changed shape, there hasn't really been a causeway to get into this bit of the woods. So, yeah. So, back to Kwanzaa. You know, it's a celebration of your local community, your people, which I want to start more and more regarding as the people of Earth. You know, to celebrate the fact that we were once tied to the seasons and tied to our environment in a way that we aren't really now, in the Western world at least. And hopefully we'll be able to roll that more out for the people that want it and need it. So, uh, yeah. Hence the boiler suit, you know. I want to almost like Baden-Powell's design for the Scout uniform. It needs to be practical, inexpensive, you know, and relatively smart. So black boots, black boiler suit. Add black hat of your choice. Add belt, add patches. I saw a really lovely um, inverse V patch where the V was in rainbow stripes and the outside of the V was in uh, black and white stripes. So it looked like a cross between a First Earth Battalion rainbow patch and a Spartan badge. But also it's um, supposedly recognised as a straight ally for LGBTQ plus peeps. I think that would be a good badge. They're a little pricey, but you know, when you consider how long it would take you to actually make one or the cost of the embroidery machine to make one, then uh, yeah. But if you had access to an inkjet printer, you could print it out and laminate it and put some Velcro on the back and you have a shiny, you know, swap outable, changeable Velcro patch. So I'm going to see how that works and maybe combine that with a QR code so that you can stop the uh, 
tape, scan it into your phone and that will give you our website linkage. I just think QR codes are cool anyway. So yeah, so there's a lot of uh, almost uniform type stuff as in, you know, every subculture has a uniform, you know, so a boiler suit and boots, plus whatever practical stuff you want to add. And Harlequin and I have just sort of stopped chatting on the Discord while we're still using it because he's doing the Freedom Box thing and there should be Freedom Box chat and I think he's already got that up and running. And uh, definitely Freedom Box is one of those things. I'm going to nick the video a little bit <coughs> regarding Freedom Box um, and upload it on Urban Agoge and Rangers. <sighs> and I'm hoping to roll out something to do with the culture website and the new rollout for the new channel to um, the rant folk, the rangers folk and the urban agogi folk and everybody on the discord. So the first couple of videos will go up on both but they'll also go up on the new channel. I'd like to run urban agogi for a little longer, possibly up until May 2020. So it's like a whole year of videos. And I'd like to believe that I can shoot a, a trailer um, for the culture. So we can start rolling out a Freedom Box based channel. You know, also uploading stuff to YouTube, tweeting, getting people to follow stuff. You know, hashtag culture. Let's we'll see if we can roll this out. I mean, what a uniform, you know, you know, a lot of those, you look at the general layout of mods and rockers and, you know, stuff like that. And uh, the uniform was quite expensive. You know, you look at the uniform for all sorts of other subcultures and it requires money to be spent. Whereas I like to think that, you know, workwear as uniform has a lot of different meanings and a lot of different uses. One, it's always designed to be really sturdy. Uh, you know, it's always really sturdy. It's always, you know, cheap because corporations have to buy a lot of it and the military have to buy a lot of it so you're making a saving in money based on the uh, military industrial complex you're also making a nod to 1984 where if you wanted to go proper Winston Smith you just wear a pair of blue coveralls and a pair of sensible boots you know that's your Winston Smith cosplay right there so that says to other people, you know, I am a prole, you know, it's like a badge of being working class. It fits everybody. It doesn't look good on anybody, you know, really. But there's other advantages too. Say if you had your uniform and the protest you're at gets kettled and you can change into a uniform with a lightweight high vis sweater that says maintenance and you've got a hard hat in your bag maybe a clipboard oh, look at that a weird little ramp you can see in the river there I don't know what that's for but the water's moving pretty quick so yeah you can disappear you know overalls, high vis, work boots kind of invisible So yeah, it'll last for a long time. It doesn't wear out, doesn't cost very much. Is practical. Uh, for instance, right now, I'm wearing sweatpants and a, and a jumper underneath it, because this is an XL pair of coveralls. And uh, yeah, you could probably waterproof it since most of them are made out of poly cotton. You know, this thing has six pockets. It's got two rear pockets, 
two hip pockets and two chest pockets. So plenty of info, plenty of stuff to put your, your kit in if you're just out for a wander. Yeah, I'm liking it. I don't know if I can uh, prop up the camera so you can have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, apologies, I never do this sort of thing right, but I think once there is... Uh, wait. Once there is a kind of chunk of time for a fashion show. Let's see if we can rest that up there. And yeah, so this is an extra large boiler suit. That's as close as you're going to get for now. There may well be a culture fashion show. But also, it, and I apologise for rubbish camera angles, but you know, a roughly edited video or a video today. I'm going to go with a video today because, you know, time's always an issue because I'm a pro. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I'm seriously thinking about starting a podcast called Airstrip One, you know, which we'll, we'll try and organise so we can have phone ins and people listening in live, you know, like we did with the podcast, which works fairly well. I think I now have a, an understanding of it. And, uh, yeah. So, lots of things to come. You know, I want to do some bushcrafty type stuff. Um, when the weather changes for the better. Gardening type stuff. The uh, working class second home idea. So yeah, all kinds of useful stuff. Uh, we'll be trying to sort out a Twitter feed and an Instagram and a Snapchat. Um, there'll be stuff on technology, making stuff, there may even be a, uh, a save the planet type show. So I'm hoping that during the week, Monday to Friday, which is when I think we're going to put stuff out, we may be able to create um, the idea of you know, five shows a week. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Maybe something like, you know, call it Quantum Box. It's both outside and inside the box at the same time, because you're sitting there watching it on a screen. But it's all about people thinking differently. Wouldn't that be interesting? So yeah, so I wanna I wanna submit user-generated content into this. So I'm gonna be asking a lot of people. You know, please think about putting some time into if there's anything weird that you do, or if there's anything commonsensical that you do that you don't think anybody else does, or but not like anybody else in your bubble, anybody else in the Rangers sphere or the urban agogi sphere. I want people, you know, do you have you got any hacks, any any things that you do that you try and explain to people that you think might be useful to other people that are tuning in? Because I'm going to be trying to aim for like a completely new audience. And we've nearly had, you know, an extra 50 or 60 survivors. Sorry, subscribers. Ha! <laughs> Freudian slip. So we've already had, we could have had another 60 or so subscribers to Urban Agogi, but it was never publicised and the first episode wasn't very good. Like the first thing I uploaded was not the trailer. But that's because the purpose of Urban Agogi was to get me outdoors regularly every day and start learning stuff. And I believe I learned a whole bunch of stuff as a result of doing it for the past seven months. And I want to carry on doing at least some videos a week because it's good for me and it's exercise and I get to be out in the woods and film and stuff. Whereas a lot of other stuff will, be need, will need to be pre-made and will be rolled out, you know, on a weekly basis. So there's, you know, a few hours of output every week, but that it's largely shot on days off or it's largely shot in batches or it's a whole long video split up into 15 minute videos because People don't watch long videos. People whine about long videos. Not, oh. this, this is why I haven't fallen over in a while, because I haven't been over here.
for a bit. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So I'll be I'll be splitting stuff down, and on some of the uh, culture episodes, I'll be running a timer. not going to have a lot of time for editing. Uh, there we go. So I'll be running a timer to do, um, I can't remember which it is, Instagram or Snapchat videos. So there's the first minute and the first minute will tell you largely what's in the rest of the episode. And then there's a 10 minute video which will be the guts of the episode and then there'll be the extended version for people that like that sort of thing. So getting the, all the data to be as tightly organized as possible. So yeah. So that's the plan. And also, you know, arraying that stuff on freedom boxes and keeping people updated as to what's happening on the freedom boxes. Now, which way did we come? I think it's this way. Because I think the freedom boxes need to feature. Now, if we can create a culture of people rolling these, these things out. So to put it in perspective, you need a machine that's maybe got a gigabyte of RAM, you know, and some external storage, you know, enough onboard storage to hold 400 megabytes of operating system, roughly, and a capability of hooking it into the internet. You know, so we're talking Raspberry Pi 2, 3, and 4, or we're talking, you know, reasonably good condition thin clients you know and uh, a goodish internet connection and that's it so i think most people in the rangers in the rant forums you know and some of the people that watch urban agogi will have an old computer lying around the reason raspberry pis are better is that they use something like 150 or 100 watts max I don't think it's even that. Um, could be as low as 15 watts, one, one or two amps, usually two, and then five volts. So I think it's, it's something like 10 watts, you know, I over VR or V over IR for Ohm's law. So the V is five. I think the R is gonna be the ampage. No. So yeah. So it shouldn't be a lot, it's like low power, so it shouldn't cost you much to run, but you'll be able to run and host your own chat rooms, your own websites, your own... Ooh, could be interesting. I don't know what that is. So, you know, any internet service that you can think of, blogs, all that sort of thing, a gateway to the internet, a, uh, a what do you call it? Uh, a thingy, uh, what do they call it? What's the name of that thing? A pro like a, a, a secret proxy server. And you'll be able to host media and links to other media. So yeah, so I think we're gonna look into going more on archive.org because it takes a long time for anybody to delete anything off archive.org and compile links and stuff and maybe self-host some stuff that you're interested in so you can watch it without having to go on the internet, make your own library. And there do seem to be an awful lot of mad level things like that. Yeah, this would be interesting. Not such a good idea. So yeah. So the Freedom Box thing is going to be fairly important. We'll be running video tutorials on Freedom Box. That's going to be some work. But we're committed. So also, let's see if we can do this. I got myself a tattoo. I don't know if you can see that. There's my new tattoo. It goes under my watch strap. So it says Solus Sum Auxilio Venerere Non. Which is a very rough translation, given that Latin has a different sentence structure and different verbs, and some words didn't exist. 
and it also doesn't have a U. Remember that if you ever get a Latin tattoo, the convention for Latin, as far as scholars are concerned, is that Latin only had um, so many um, letters. It only had 23 letters. So they didn't have a usually a V, or a U or a W but the U sound was made up by the V, sort of like the F instead of the two S's in Old English script. So it's a thing, depending on where you stand on Latin, completely the fact that it's not meant to be whoop, translated into English, it's never designed for it. So the sentence structure is all equipped and I wanted to reduce the number of words. You could make it into a much longer sentence and it means I am alone, help is not coming. And that serves two purposes. You know, it's very much along the lines of where am I going, who's coming with me and never get the order messed up from Sean Kennedy, who even though he's not doing anything, just remains a dude forever. And I'd love to get him on the show. So if you're out there in Rangerland or Rantland or Urban Agogi land, and you have an in with Sean Kennedy or anybody that we would consider useful, be nice to speak to Robert Heinlein. Um, so people like that, it'd be interesting to get hold of Sean Kennedy, Jalla Biafra, um, you know, Henry Rollins, you know, people we admire. But the, fo the focus of the culture is not, you know, we're oppressed, we fight back. It's more, let's step outside the culture bubble that we're presented with. Let's be interested in things other than, you know, what is completely advertised to us, what is expected of us as humans, you know. And there's only one barrier to entry. It is, is a bit more, a bit like, you know, the moment you decide you're a ranger, you are. Um, and our core, my core principles as far as that aren't gonna change. So everything's up for discussion. However, although I'm an atheist and I would question religion that dominates other people, if you have a belief system, and as, as long as that belief system is yours alone, feel free to discuss it. You know, but I don't buy into them and us. There's a few them, there's a few people out there in the world, not many, who do stuff, you know, regardless of the harm it does to other people. The vast majority of people would pr prefer not to harm other people. And the vast majority of people would prefer people weren't hungry, starving, dying of preventable diseases, being uneducated and unsheltered. We'd like that fixed. And I believe that's a, an almost, almost universal feeling. And the only reason people pretend that they don't care about that is because it's too fucking painful. That's why people like me, who are weird, and people like you, the weird people that watch weird people like me, and go, yeah, that doesn't seem to be an overarching viewpoint. I think it is. I think most people have compassion. It's just you have to bury that compassion. You have to put that compassion in a box in order to be able to operate. But that also means eventually you start not doing anything with that compassion, okay? Whereas we are the curious. We are the people who see the world's lack of compassion and it almost drives us to mental illness. In some cases it does. You know, this, you know, this situation of box up your compassion or go mad is not sustainable. You know, even the most sociopathic of us realizes that there needs to be a planet for us to stand on to have our ideas and our thoughts. So yeah, I think the reason a lot of especially young people, people who've never known, you know, I'm saying under 30s, those people that have never known a life outside of the internet, look at stuff and go, but the world's really broken. Surely, you know, it's the job of a government, or it's the job of my tribe, or it's the job of people older than me to have fixed this by now. And it used to drive me absolutely bonkers. You know, and I mean it, you know, borderline mentally ill. Probably even if I'd gone to a doctor, if there was such a thing in this country as a reasonable mental health service, they'd have put me on something. Like an antidepressant and stuff so I could forget. 
and I could box up my compassion and I could, you know, shut out the things that I can see and hear all over me all around the world. So yeah, it drives people crazy. Some people get compassion fatigue, but maybe compassion fatigue is just your brain's ability to just go, nope, we're not thinking about that today. That's too much, too much pain, too much stupidity, too much callousness. And the way I got out of it was learning how to look after myself in the environment, you know, outside of an urban setting so that I could at least think no matter what happens, no matter what crazy shit my government pulls, I can just fuck off. And that's a good thing, that will help you rebuild. You know, you need to see, you know, it doesn't, you don't need, necessarily need to be the most competent person on earth in order to, you know, feel safe. Just, you know, you need to know that, you know, the steps and the radical fuck-ups that you're, the, the people in charge of how your life runs, whether it runs at all, the people in charge of your electricity, your food supply, your water supply, your shelter, your pay, you know, having money to operate in the world, is not the be-all and end-all. You know, push comes to shove, you can just fuck off. And that, it's a bit like the, oh, in real terms, it's a bit like going to someone's house and although nobody, you know, there is a sign on the toilet door, say you go to someone's house and you see that there's no lock on the loo or the bathroom. You know, that's how the world makes some of us feel. Like, you know, oh, well, we won't come in the bathroom if you're using it. And it's kind of like, that's not the point. You know, I need to feel that you can't come in the bathroom while I'm using it type thing. That's just how I need to feel. I need to feel that in the places where I am vulnerable, you cannot come if I choose for you not to let to come. And society again and again and again and again, you know, the people in charge or the corporations in charge, and let's call corporations what they are, paper AIs that don't care about humans, keeps telling us that we don't need a lock on the bathroom door. So if you ever see anybody that's quite good at bushcraft, this is someone that takes their own lock when they go to the house without a lock on the bathroom door. This is someone that takes an umbrella and figures out how to wedge it under the door. So it's locked whether the people in the house want to install a lock or not. So that's a pretty visceral metaphor. But you know, the vulnerability that people feel is because they've got enough brains to see that they are vulnerable. And some poor fuckers go mad. And some people get depressed and some people start doing heroin and some people start being self-destructive you know or just can't cope and I know I've been there I had a mental breakdown probably in my 30s then in my 40s I had another one went and lived in a teepee for five years and that's not normal those weren't good decisions no decisions made by you know the whole thing of just leave me in this room with my toaster oven and my tv remote control and my radio and i'll be good and time and time again corporations and people proved that they couldn't you know kept telling me that i didn't need a lock on the bathroom door metaphorically and then kept popping in for stuff you know started taking the toilet paper away started taking away the hand soap started making it worse and worse for me, particularly. So yeah, but in that, I want everybody to be welcome, but you know, let's not have racism, homophobia, class bullshit. You know, the idea is that we take back a little bit of control and we come up with an invention like a maglock for a toilet door, or we can sonically expand the wood so it can't open while we don't want it to. We just want to live our lives. But uh, our lives, our happiness, our ability to sleep easy at night, you know, if anybody ever goes, you know, stupid people don't have mental illnesses. It's only smart people that have mental illness. It's only smart people that freak out and have anxiety because they can see what's going on. Whew. So let's be a bit less anxious. Let's feel a bit more connected. 
Hence the kind of uniform thing. I'm not saying everybody should shave their hair and buy a black boiler suit. I'm saying, you know, let's have a look at what clothes mean. Let's deny that, at least when on camera. That's how, you know, let, you know, if you do it on camera, you know that the possibility for you is there to just go, no, I'm not playing your game. So yeah, I'm gonna stop it there because I've got things to do, but it's been fun. I had a good workout walking up and down the hills and uh, thanks for watching, do take care. Where am I going? Who's coming with me? And never get the order fucked up. Later. <laughs>